YouTube. It is Extreme 0351 here coming at you. Getting ready to do an unboxing of some new parts I got for my upper receiver. Like I told you guys in the last video, I've been working on this build for about five months now. Uh, have been, you know, kind of searching around online like everybody does to, you know, get the best deal, the best parts I can find. And uh, it's been really taking my time uh, with figuring out exactly what I want. And, you know, just decided to show you guys some of the stuff I got, different builds. Some of the parts I decided to go with, I've noticed I haven't really seen too many reviews on. Uh, some stuff, obviously, I have, but, you know, other things I haven't. Um, some of the things that I'm going to show you, uh, the unboxing from today, are going to be the V7 weapon systems, uh, Fusion Titanium uh, muzzle brake. You're going to see the Voltor uh, Merv 18 upper receiver. This is a new one, the 2014 edition. And the Voltor E-Mod uh, mil-spec and tan as well as uh, some other random, you know, unboxings I'm going to do, you know, throughout the course of this video. Um, again, hey, give me some credit. This is one of my first unboxings, so bear with me. I probably will have to look and reference some different stuff, uh, depending on, you know, what it is. So, first box, pop this bad boy open, see what we got, what we're working with. Uh, one thing I have to say, I ordered this stuff from Vertex Ops. And I have to say, uh, they're right out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, so not too far from me at all. I'm stationed uh, in California, Camp Hilton. Um, and I have to say, their customer service is beyond good. Um, by the time I ordered the parts and actually received them, it was probably less than four days with free shipping, um, on top of the fact that, uh, you know, they gave a courtesy call. I talked to one of them because I wasn't sure if it was shipping in time uh, due to when I had ordered it. Uh, spoke to one of their, their reps there. Gentleman was super cool. Made sure the order went out same day. I mean, I really just couldn't, um, you know, express more gratitude towards them for uh, the hospitality they shared, uh, you know, on the phone and whatnot. So this is the Voltor upper receiver that I got. Um, definitely, you know, extremely good quality. I'll tell you that right now, right off the bat. I mean, everything about this uh, upper receiver feels feels top notch. Um, I really, really like Voltor products. I, I have not had any problems with them. I have yet to find really quality parts that match them, not in every aspect. Because, uh, you know, there's some great companies out there. But just the quality uh, from these guys is just superb, in my opinion. They just do a really good job of uh, of creating products. So this is what we're looking at here. You know, Voltor Upper. Um, you know, this is, uh, as you guys used to know, they would have the logo that used to come all the way across. Uh, they've gone away with that. Now the new one has got, you know, the Voltor. see if I get the camera to adjust to this. The, you know, got the logo there for Voltor, you got the uh, American flag, and that is it, which I like. I like. I, I really like the plain Jane look. I don't have to have stuff all over. This rifle is getting painted immediately. Uh, like I said in my last video, I do not deal with, uh, with black um, upper receivers, lower receivers, anything really. I, I like to paint my rifles, um, depending on the area of operation that I'm working in. Uh, that's just how I am. That's how I've always been. And it, it, it's what works for me. Um, I already know that these two are going to mate, you know, amazingly. Uh, you know, I'm just excited for uh, for this build. You know, I just shit can't really say too much more about it. So I had a tough time looking at different uppers. Um, BCM had some really good uh, products out, and I was really contemplating on getting one of their blemished uppers. Um, one, they're at a real good price point, and the blemishes they have are very minuscule. They're all cosmetic. It's usually like a little scratch or a scrape, you know, here and there. Um, and it, you know, it's really, really appealing to me, especially the build I'm going. I'm going for an SPR, but I'm going for an SPR, you know, that I want to build, not what everybody on YouTube's doing or on the internet or people you meet at the range. When I build stuff, I build it for myself.
what you like, uh, what you know works best for you. You can't always just. I guess. I mean, I guess you can. You can choose to go exactly like a Mark 12, go down that road and be like, you know, I'm going to make it, you know, as authentic as possible. To me, that this build was not about that at all. Uh, I decided that, you know, I wanted certain parts. I wanted a very specific, uh, you know, intent for use, but at the same time, I wanted it to be something that was, you know, built in my style of an SPR. And that's why I decided to go with this handguard. This is a 12 inch handguard, like I said, by Midwoods Industries. Um, they seem to have the best price that I could find online. Uh, they seem to do a great job with the distributors they use. And with a new key mod that came out, you know, this is a little bit cheaper, so, you know, why not save a few bucks? Um, like I said earlier, you know, I am active duty military, so a lot of the websites and whatnot will give me a uh, discount depending on who they are. So that's pretty cool. But you got to go with, with what you like. You know, don't, I don't follow fads. I don't follow trends. I don't follow any sort of, uh, um, you know, hype online or any of that stuff. You know, I've already deal enough of that stuff in the military, so I go with what works best for me and for the intent of use that I have for it. And so, with that being said, you know, this worked best for me, and that's what I choose to go with. So it looks like it comes uh, with some tools. And that's pretty cool. You got the uh, Allen wrenches and whatnot. You got some bolts. Looks like it's got some green Loctite or whatnot. First off. It feels very sturdy, I will say that. Like, it definitely has a very, very light feel to it. Uh, I don't think I have the weight um, on top of, top of my head. I don't think I have the weight on me uh, for this. Let me check for you guys. No, I don't, I don't have it. But it's extremely light. I can tell you right now, it's high quality. Uh, Mill STD 1913 top rail. Uh, for your accessories, put anything you want on there. Um, one thing I like about this, guys, it's a super slim profile. So, it can really get your hand, I mean, I can wrap my hand all the way around it. I'm not really worried about the handguard getting too hot. But, at the same time, you know, like I said, super slim profile, 1.5 inches on the outside di uh, diameter. Um, let's see, oh, there he is, uh, 9.3 ounces with steel barrel nut included. So, I mean, that, to me, I mean, that's ridiculously light. I mean, it really is. Like, that's insanely light. So, this is a very, very good uh, buy, in um, my opinion. Uh, Midwest Industries does a really good job with their products. I haven't had this particular product before, but products in the past I've had, they just do a really good job. Top quality. Uh, can't really look for anything better uh, than this, in my opinion. You know, for the money, for the bang for the buck. I think I paid about... 150, 160 bucks for this thing. So, this is that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be building the rifle completely um, this weekend. So, I will, uh, I will show you the build, how I go about it. Um, I never leave anything black. Uh, to me, like you look in nature, there's a handful of things that are black. So, I if it's if it's black, I mean I paint that thing immediately. Um, it's just just how I do things. Uh, I don't I don't prefer to have, you know, the standard, you know, AR-15 look. I guess. I mean, everybody does different shit nowadays with their AR-15s. So that's Midwest Industries. 